first thing a professor does is ask questions of her students. So, what is interdisciplinarity? A nexus between two independent bodies of knowledge. Anybody else? What is interdisciplinarity? Come on, I asked this at dinner last night and several of you volunteered. Yes. Uh, fusing multiple ideas to get one result. Fusing multiple ideas to get one result. I think those are both really good answers. I think of it in terms of food. And since we've recently <laughs> eaten lunch, maybe we can, you can do that too. Okay, so if you think about a meal, a few green peas on your plate, think of that as a discipline. Add carrots to the green peas, now you've got multidisciplinarity. To have interdisciplinarity, you've got to do something with those vegetables. You've got to pour some salad dressing on it and make it a salad. You've got to cook it together and make it a soup. You could put it through a blender so that neither the peas nor the carrots even appear anymore, now you'd have what they call transdisciplinarity. But it's basically, as you say, it's some kind of an integration, some sort of bringing together. And if you look at the National Academy of Sciences um, definition, it's inquiry that integrates information, data, techniques, tools. By the way, it's not all of these, and any of these will lead to interdisciplinarity. Information, data, techniques, tools, perspectives, concepts, and theories, or theories. Any of those things will lead you to interdisciplinarity. Okay. What's a silo? We hear about silos all the time. What's a silo? Yeah, a, a, an isolated structure of some sort. So many people think about disciplines as silos. And we'll come back to this notion pretty soon because some people talk about let's bust up the silos, let's break down the silos, let's throw away the silos. So that's, that's the contrast to interdisciplinarity. Okay, why do people nowadays want interdisciplinarity? And I can tell you they want it. I wish I had a dollar for every research university that now has, you know, foster interdisciplinarity as part of its strategic plan. Why do, why do we want interdisciplinarity? What's it for? It's vibrant. It creates new opportunities. New opportunities. What else? We're specialized too much. We're specialized too much. Okay. So what will less specialization do for us? <coughs> Innovation. Innovation. Creativity. That's number one. The idea is that if you're exposed to multiple points of view, you will become more creative. And what flows from that is more productive. So a lot of foundations, National Academy of Sciences, private foundations want interdisciplinarity because they want greater productivity and they want more creativity. <clears throat> the other thing they want is better problem solving. Because the idea is that if you bring multiple perspectives together, you can have multiple views and you won't make mistakes or as many mistakes as you will if you're just working from a single discipline. So the study I'm going to tell you about was funded by um, the Atlantic Philanthropies and then uh, the Ford Foundation funded me to write up the study. And it is a study of three research universities <clears throat> who will remain nameless, um, all, all of which created interdisciplinary faculty seminars. All the faculty members who signed up for these seminars volunteered for it. I mean, in some cases, the administration tapped them, but it was all voluntary. And they all said they wanted to learn one another's disciplines. The idea was, uh, in one case, to bridge uh, science and humanities, in another case uh, to just have social scientists talk to one another, and in a third case all disciplines were involved, including um, composers and studio artists and so on. Of the six seminars, four, I would say, blew up. Uh, they had enormous conflict. 
they should have heard from Chris Miller because they did everything opposite to what he suggested. They listened only to themselves, and they love to listen to themselves. And anybody who had an idea that wasn't congruent with theirs, they put that idea down. Uh, one of the battles was between an economist and a religious studies professor. So there was a mathematician speaking about game theory, and the economist didn't like what he had to say. And I'm an economist, so I know this very well. When economists don't like what you say, they tell you very bluntly that they don't like what you say. Uh, you might even say they tell you rudely uh, that they don't like what you say. And the underlying theory is that if everybody knows that this kind of criticism is coming, uh, nobody will give you any bullshit. So you should be tough in your criticism. And the economist was simply doing what he had been trained to do and what he'd been practicing doing for uh, 30, 40 years. There was a religious studies professor in the group who had come from a Quaker community who was horrified at this behavior and truly dressed him down, told him that this behavior was unacceptable, that he was rude, and so on. And guess what? The economist stood up, left the room, and never came back. And the efforts on the part of the uh, seminar leader to get him back were fruitless. So what have we got here? It's not just that the economist and the religious studies professor spoke different languages, which they did. They came from totally different cultures. Interdisciplinary, and this is just one example from the study. Interdisciplinarity uh, in academia, and really in high schools as well, is like going to the UN and trying to get people to communicate from Ghana and uh, Thailand. They are from entirely different cultures. But academics don't recognize this. They think they're from the same culture because after all, they all have the same employer. You know, they're all academics, they have the same job title. But they're in fact profoundly different. And the big idea that I want to leave with you today is not interdisciplinarity, that's an old idea. The big idea is that if you want it, you'd better design for it. And you'd better design for it really carefully, the way you would if you were going into some kind of a cross-cultural uh, situation. <clears throat> so when did it work? To be really simple-minded, it worked in the situations where people followed Chris Miller's <laughs> uh, ideas and in fact listen to one another. It worked in the situation where the leader of the group was trying to bridge science and the humanities, and this goal was set out from the beginning. Everybody was on board to do a bridging between science and the humanities. People listened, they let go of their own agenda, they were flexible, they co-created. Have you, have you heard this before today? Um, that's what made the successful seminars successful. So there's a bigger debate here nationally. Um, Mark Taylor wrote a piece in the New York Times uh, a couple of years ago in which he argued that disciplines have to be abolished. Depart university departments have to be abolished. They are, um, they are making progress impossible. They are keeping us mired uh, in the mud. And we should just throw the whole thing out and begin again uh, with interdisciplinarity. Okay, on the other hand, we have, oh, and, and by the way, um, breaking down silos is, is a big metaphor for this kind of thinking. And some liberal arts colleges are, are trying to move in this direction. Uh, some of them want to put quotas on their strategic plans so that they actually would count the number of new interdisciplinary courses that are created in the liberal arts college. You know, try to get rid of all these single-based disciplinary courses. <clears throat> on the other hand, we have Jerry Jacobs, who's just written um, an op-ed piece for the Chronicle of Higher Education, which says just the opposite. He says, we don't have to do anything. We're already there. 
there's a tremendous amount of interdisciplinarity. Um, there are all these departments like American Studies and um, discipline, new disciplines form all the time. And we should stop trying to push into disciplinarity and just relax about it and uh, kind of let it happen on its own. My view is somewhere between these two things. I don't think we ought to abolish departments. I don't think we ought to abolish disciplines. I mean, if you think about knowledge today, it is extraordinarily complex. You can't be a player if you don't have some disciplinary knowledge and grounding, if you're not familiar with the latest uh, in, the, in the journals concerning your specialty. You have to be specialized. So I don't, I don't think the idea of getting rid of departments uh, is the way to go. On the other hand, I think it's not correct uh, that everything is fine and we don't need to do anything. Most of what passes for interdisciplinarity is not integrative. Even courses that are labeled uh, as multidisciplinary do not help students integrate. We leave it to the students to do their integration. If you think about college majors, we often have a um, uh, capstone senior seminar where we help students to integrate the material in their own major. But who helps students to integrate all of the courses that they're taking at any one time? Nobody. They, they, it's, it's, it's in their own heads. And maybe talking to some uh, students in their dorm. Although having lived in the dorm, I can tell you there's that, not much conversation about that. It's more about the latest basketball game. So we need to help students to integrate. And just as we need to design interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary seminars with the purpose of integrating, we need to design education in this way. I did a project, oh boy, 15 years ago or more um, in California when economics was mandated as a required subject. And I tried to see what was going on in the teaching of economics in high schools. And I found that there were AP students taking calculus and economics at the same time. And so I said to several of the teachers, calculus and economics, you know, these two subjects could be integrated. AP calculus and AP economics uh, should integrate these two subjects. I got nowhere. The calculus teacher said, guess what? I don't know any economics. The economics teacher said, I don't know any calculus. So, we need to help students at all levels to integrate what they're learning. And to do that, we need to learn uh, material beyond our own disciplines. In conclusion, interdisciplinarity is not a silver bullet. I mean, it's not going to um, solve all the problems of education. On the other hand, it is like a four-wheel drive. It will help us to drive the car, meaning creativity, higher education, uh, more, more knowledge creation. Uh, but it won't, it won't fly an airplane. I mean, it's not designed to do something that it wasn't meant to do. So my, my comments to you are, if we want interdisciplinarity, we need to design for it, both at the classroom level at the school level, nationally, we have to think about the integration of disciplines. We have to be aware of how tremendously difficult this is because our experts all have blinders on, uh, beginning from their graduate training or perhaps before. So we have to dismantle the bl blinders. We have to bring people together. We have to create an environment in which they listen to each other and co-create. And I think that way we will, we will reap the rewards that are inherent in interdisciplinarity. Thank you.